Joining me right now is a, in a Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is Byron Donalds, a key member of the House Oversight Committee, Florida Congressman. Byron Donalds is here. Congressman, thanks very much for joining me this morning. Good morning, Maria. Good to be with you. So in terms of that deposition behind closed doors scheduled for Thursday, do these new charges, this indictment against Hunter Biden, does that mean that he won't show up on Thursday to go under oath for you and your colleagues? Well, listen, he's been threatening not to go under oath for weeks now. So the fact that he's now been indicted should not encumber our ability in the House to be able to have number one, a closed door session first to have written have written testimony under oath and then for him to be able to move towards an open hearing. But what Hunter Biden wants to do is to use the open hearing uh, aspects of congressional hearings to put on a show, to put on a spectacle without actually having a deposition of his words under oath before he reaches an open session. So we're not going to let that happen. He needs to sit for the for the closed door deposition first. Every witness we bring to Capitol Hill has to do the same thing. He is no different. Uh, I'm just wondering if the timing of this indictment on Hunter Biden uh, is uh, a partly cover up because the DOJ had this information. They've been sitting on this for a long time, but they decided to indict Hunter Biden the weekend before he was supposed to go under oath in a closed door testimony. Look, I totally agree. The timing is suspect. And let's take yeah. a step back. His attorney, Abby Lowell, says that, oh, the only reason why he got indicted is because his last name is Biden. No, Abby, the only reason that it took so long for him to be indicted is because his last name is Biden and because House Republicans uncovered this web of corruption surrounding Joe Biden that implicates Hunter Biden and James Biden. And so that is the reason why it's taken so long for this to occur. Well, you could also argue that uh, if his name wasn't Biden, he wouldn't have been able to generate all those millions of dollars that James Comer said that he did. Uh, I want to ask you about this impeachment inquiry, this formal impeachment inquiry that you'll vote on uh, this week on Tuesday. Do you feel you have the votes to go forward with a formal impeachment inquiry? I believe that we do. Look, the Oversight Committee, the Judiciary Committee, and the Ways and Means Committee, we've been working... Uh, really diligently going through this entire situation, uncovering the facts. So some of our colleagues who were leery earlier on in this Congress about moving towards impeachment, now the facts are very clear about why we need to finish our investigation. The impeachment inquiry vote will allow us to do that. Uh, by the way, Maria, there's a White House official and three Department of Justice officials who are ignoring congressional subpoenas. We fully believe that a vote on the floor this week will give us the ability to fully enforce those subpoenas, because there is no reason why federal government employees would uh, spurn a House subpoena to come in and testify. But this is how deep the swamp is surrounding Joe Biden. So I expect House Republicans to do the right thing, stand up, vote for the impeachment inquiry this week so we can finish our investigation. Well, your committee chairman, James Comer, as well as uh, Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan, uh, say that they will hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress if he does not uh, deliver and come through on Thursday for that closed-door testimony. What does that mean exactly, contempt of Congress? So is he really going to be afraid of that? Uh, well, first of all, that is absolutely what should happen. He should be held in contempt if he ignores a congressional subpoena. That's number one. Number two, uh, look, this guy, Hunter Biden, he thinks nothing can touch him because his daddy's been protecting him for years right now. We under, as we, What we understand right now, Maria, is, is that if it wasn't for a federal judge actually looking at the first plea deal that David Weiss put together when he wasn't a special counsel, by the way, that plea deal was a joke. They were going to hide all these tax charges under this, under this gun charge, which, by the way, didn't even follow through with what it needed to do. They were going to hide the Farrah violations under the gun charge. And so the only reason this is coming forward is because of House Republicans continuing this investigation. If Hunter Biden thinks he's going to run and hide now because his last name is Biden and his daddy is president, he's got another thing coming. Now, what about the statute of limitations allowed to run out on Hunter's egregious crimes in 2014 and 2015, as what some of your colleagues have said? Is that uh, evidence of a cover-up at the DOJ? I 100 percent believe that. There is no reason why the Department of Justice didn't bring these charges earlier, except for the fact that Hunter Biden is a quote-unquote sensitive political person. That's why those that's why those tax charges were allowed to lapse under statute of limitations, because the total intent was to not bring any charges or very limited charges against Hunter Biden and sweep this all under the rug. The entire purpose is to protect the big guy, Joe Biden. 
So how does this all play out? You know, last week we were talking about this uh, Wall Street Journal op-ed. Uh, Kim Strassel writes, Hunter Biden's missing services. We saw that email from a bank uh, uh, money laundering expert who listed all of these things about Hunter Biden's accounts, erratic activity, a $5 million initial uh, uh, payment uh, into the account, and there was no business services rendered. Uh, where do you see this going, Congressman? Well, what I see happening is that over the next month or two, we're going to finish our investigation. I do believe at that point it's going to be crystal clear that there are articles of impeachment that should be drafted for Joe Biden because, number one, he accepted bribes through his family from foreign nations, especially China and others. Number two, he knew that his brother and his son were violating the Foreign Agents Registration Act. I believe he's a co-conspirator in that because if you knowingly understand that your family's getting money from overseas and you don't tell them to register as foreign agents or foreign lobbyists or whatever, however you want to define it, that's a violation of federal law. So I believe that is a situation right there for the American people to see. Um, I believe that's enough to, to draft articles of impeachment against Joe Biden, and I believe that is going to happen in the House of Representatives in the spring. Well, let's talk about the uh, other policy decisions that this president has made. We see an economy slowing down, uh, and yet he keeps pushing Bidenomics. Now the Democrats are talking about this being a messaging problem. What about the actual policy? It looks like all of us are going to have to pay higher taxes now to pay for all of the reckless spending of the last two and a half years. Well, look, you're absolutely right. There is no messaging problem. It's a policy problem. The Democrats always like to sell their, their policies, thinking that everybody's just going to hear the cool phrases that they that they focus group and they poll test and ignore the reality. But here's what's happened in America. Everybody has fallen behind, especially if you're poor or middle income, you've fallen behind even further. And so this situation with Bidenomics or wherever you want to call it, I just call it stupid economic policy. No need to put his name to it, but we can do that for, for politics sake. Everybody has been hurting. Our economy is stagnating. Inflation is still here, still sticky, and it's caused a problem for the way Americans live their lives day to day. When people can't even get ahead to buy a used car because they're too expensive or to put food on the table, energy is more expensive. None of this is working for the American people. So they can call it whatever they want, but the American people understand that Joe Biden has been the architect of a disastrous economy that is hurting the very poorest among us in America. Well, that's what I was go getting at. I mean, the, the issue of policy is front and center for voters. So you've got this impeachment inquiry formalized this week. If you've got some members of Congress who decide they don't want to vote for an impeachment uh, inquiry of Joe Biden, uh, putting the corruption aside, you know, just simple on policy, a wide open border, a foreign policy disaster with the, uh, with the uh, exit from Afghanistan, uh, botched exit, uh, and, and of course, uh, the policy on economics that you're talking about. Do you think those Congress people will, uh, will, will see voters get upset and move to uh, replace them, primary oh. them? Look, I, um, well, first of all, I can't speak to those colleagues. What I will say is, is that we just had a vote a week ago uh, where we expelled George Santos. Now, I did not vote to expel George. I felt George should have had his day in court. But if you're going to take a vote to expel George Santos based upon the Ethics Committee report, then you should easily be able to vote for an impeachment inquiry based upon the investigation that's been brought forward by the Oversight Committee, the Judiciary Committee, and the Ways and Means Committee. Because with all due respect, with everything that happened with George and the accusations are not good, but that pales in comparison to the accusations that have been uh, leveled and the evidence that has, been come, has come underneath those accusations against the Biden family. So I would urge all yeah. of my colleagues to vote for that impeachment inquiry this week. Well, you, you mentioned George Santos. I just want to be clear here. George Santos, we think, lied, and he's out. Uh, is Bob Menendez still in the Senate? He sure is, Maria, and that's one of the things, one of the reasons why I did not vote uh, for the expulsion of George Santos is because the, the precedent had been that either you were in the Confederate Army or you were convicted in a court of law. That did not right. happen to George. So if the yeah. new standard is allegations and, and ethics complaints, then Bob Menendez needs to go. Yeah. All right. We will leave it there. Congressman, we'll be watching your work. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.